One of the most uh, phenomenal or the most puzzling concept about the humans that has puzzled uh, psychologists for ages past has been the human thought process. And some time ago I came across a research that actually said that man is incapable of an original thought. My name is Lauli Bitre and today on Chris 516 I'll be talking about thoughts. Yeah, thoughts. Um, the research I read back then explained how a person is incapable of an original thought. Not because they can't think, but because the thought is not originally theirs. It doesn't originate from them. Each thought that passes through a person's mind is a product of something that they once considered, something they once saw, something they once read, or information that has won that has once passed through their mind. Okay? Now the concept says that there is nothing that is um, going through our mind that we originally conceived by ourselves. It is a product of something we have once seen, heard, read, or tried, or experienced before. And it's quite unique. Each person's thought process is like a factory. Now that factory did not appear just like that. Our minds, where the thought process happened is a blank space. It's, it's something that I know as positive psychologists for ages, right? Trying to understand how the human mind works, how it processes information, how it records, how it takes it in and how it pushes it out. Another angle of the human mind that has also been a puzzle is our subconscious. Even though, yes, it's said that we can't control it and it's called subconscious because it's that part of our consciousness that is a way, is seemingly away from our control. Now, indeed, um, even though we're not aware about it, I, uh, part of what I've read is the fact that our subconscious mind is also part of our thought process. It may not be actively involved, or we may not be aware of its involvement, but somewhere, somehow, it is involved. We are unconscious of its involvement, but it is involved. Now, of course, I'm not here to talk about uh, the science of it all. I am a psychologist, and I'm not trying to prove or get a doctorate degree in it. But um, if you would agree with me that Every time it thought passes through your mind, you cannot entirely say that the thought is yours. A thought is the product of something that we have experienced either during the day or in time past. It could be what someone said to you. It could be what you read in a book. It could be what you saw in a movie. It could be a song you heard. It could be something you were taught. And all of those things enter your mind while you were receiving the information. Now, some of them stuck to your consciousness. Some of them you could remember by heart. While well, some of them seep into your subconscious, you just heard it, you didn't pay attention to it, but it's actually still stored in your subconscious. There is nothing that actually enters our mind that actually ever really truly disappears. Yeah, we forget, but I know there's this illustration, there's this thing they used to, uh, that used to be said in, in my language yeah. that you hear something with your left ear and it goes out with your through your right ear, right? But it never really goes out. It actually sits in and you hear it, but it just goes straight down to your subconscious. Let me give you a very good example. Have you ever met someone and you're trying to remember the person's name? You met the person once and then you know you recognize the face 
Okay, but you're trying to pick where you met the person from. One, you're trying to remember the person's name, and you just know that you know the name, but you just can't place it. And at that point in time, we are trying to rack through your memories to remember the person's name, and the per- the name is just right there at the tip of your tongue but you can't seem to nail it all right and it, it's like it's like it's running through your mind and you're trying to chase it chase it and you're like that's the name and you're trying to pick it what's that name what's that name what's that name and you just can't zero in on it because you never had to remember the name you've never had to use the name at all so it just sits down into your subconscious and right at that moment when you needed it the most you're really trying to just figure it and just fish it out and of course trust me if you've experienced it you will know how beautiful how how how, how elating it can be when you finally remember that name it clicks like you just yeah that's the name i was looking for or something someone mentions the name or Anything at all just reminds you and it's like a jolt, like a spark right from within in your mind. It's just like a flash. And that's how it is. We never really forget. It never really goes out. It's just a piece of information that has receded into our subconscious mind. So in reality, actually, uh, for every class you've ever sat in, for everything you have ever been taught, it's never really left. It's all stored somewhere down in your subconscious. Well, sadly, I do not know any method of hypnosis to help you try to remember those things or to go past it without exam you're really studying for. But where I am going is the fact that our mind is a powerful machine that takes information in, stores it, processes it, and pushes it out to us in our thought process. And because of that, it is important that we understand that if you put in garbage, you're going to get garbage. Right? It's not a factory where you put in raw materials, well, it could be, it is actually. Put in raw materials, it processes it, and then you get a finished, fine product, okay? So, if you put in fine raw materials, it's going to process it and bring out some fine um, end products. But if you put in garbage, it takes the garbage, processes it, and brings out lovely garbage. Well, that's, that's how it works. So we call, in computer terms we call it DDO. Garbage in, garbage out. So it means that if we are not capable of an original thought, and every thought that flows through our mind is a product of something we have at one point in time or the other experienced. Hence, we need to be more deliberate about the things that actually enter our minds, the things we take in, the things we experience. No wonder it's been no wonder it's been said as a as a as an age long truth that you guide your heart, you guard your mind. You watch the things that enter your mind. Because out of that mind will come the issues, will come the ideas will come the thoughts that will direct your life and of course as you think in your mind as you think in your heart so are you so you will become so now if what you become is a product of your thoughts and your thoughts are a product of the things that enter your mind so it's all linked the quality of life that we live is a function of the quality of our thoughts. And like I just said, the quality of our thoughts is a product of the things we take in. 
So the quality of product that comes out of the factory of our mind is dependent on the quality of raw materials we put in it. Hence, giggle. If you put in garbage, you get garbage out. And once your mind produces garbage, once your thoughts are garbage, what? You can, you can, you can finish that because I wouldn't be the one to actually end that statement. But the truth of the matter is, even though we are not capable of an original thought, we are capable of deciding, of choosing the kind of things that enter our mind. Don't get me wrong, I'm not here to tell you this is bad, this is good, these are the things you should listen to or you should hear or you should put in your mind. But if you know you do not like the kind of thoughts that cross your mind, if you do not like the kind of uh, products that your mind brings out, then maybe it's time to change the raw materials that you're actually pushing into your factory. If you don't like the fact that you're constantly depressed, you don't like the fact that you're constantly worrying, you don't like the fact that you're constantly stuck up on one problem or the other and all you ever see, all you ever consider is the fact that things are not working for you, then maybe you should shift focus, maybe you should shift the things that your mind actually process, change the things you feed your mind with. You know, while, while we, uh, as, as kids, okay, we take everything in, our minds were like magnets because it, our minds were still blank. So we were hungry for information. We needed to stuff our minds with as much research as possible so that those, lay, those foundational information that was stored up in there will begin to process any other thing that comes. And of course, as we grow older, the foundational materials of our mind can be changed. It can be renewed. You can take out the entire thought process, the entire machinery that processes your thoughts in your mind. You can replace it with new ones. That's why it is said that you can be transformed, you can change your life by renewing your mind. So it means your mind can be renewed. So if your mind has been built with foundational blocks of negative concept, negative ideas, negative ideologies, you can actually change it, you can renew it, you can turn it upside down. You get to choose. So even though yes, that the quality of things that come into our mind matters, it also determines what comes out, the quality of our mind itself also matters. So I don't want to emphasize on just the fact that you can take positive things, put it to your thoughts and bring out good things. Yeah, true. But if you take out some fine raw materials and you put it through a terrible factory, you will get a defective product. If the assembly line of a car is faulty, you would always have faulty cars. You would always eat default as long as the assembly line is faulty. The product that comes out of that assembly line will be faulty. It doesn't matter how good the raw materials were. So also, I can feed you with as much good information as you can ever lay your hands on. But if the quality of the factory in your mind is still bad, it's still faulty, you will always get a negative output. You will always get defective thoughts. You will always get thoughts that are not constructed, that are not, well, feeling the word. But, so yes, you can be conscious of the things that come into your mind. But how good is the quality of your mind? How well is that factory equipped with the right equipment to help you process good information to come out with quality thoughts that can shape your life in the direction you want to go? So the exercise or the challenge that I will pose to you today is What's the quality of your mind? 
how 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 well is your mind producing the kind of results you want is your mind producing the kind of thoughts you want in your life is it giving you thoughts that are shaping your life in the direction you want to go if it is beautiful enhance it add more to it improve it get some upgrades to it wonderful and if you are comfortable the way it is that's just fine but if it's not if it's not giving you the kind of thoughts that you want if it's not giving you the kind of thoughts that you wish you had if your mind is not producing the kind of information that can actually change your life okay even though you are listening to all the motivational messages you're listening to all the messages in church from the mentors and you're getting it all you're reading the books and you've been trying everything but at the end of the day of everything you read of everything you try your mind still constricts everything and you end up still getting scared because the thoughts that come into your mind are just gloomy are just dark none of them seem positive they're not sure about anything even after reading all of those things you read then it may be time to renew your mind it may be time to overhaul the entire assembly line of your mind because you will never rise beyond the quality of your mind of the products that come out of your heart i know that for a long time i never moved beyond my fears because i was scared i was worried about everything i constantly worried what if it doesn't work it may not work Ah, if I tried it and it doesn't work, I would have wasted a lot of resources and then I never moved. So I was constantly being stuck dead in my tracks. So even though I read all the books, even though I knew all the tactics, I knew all the good words and everything to say and do, I never really moved from where I was because my mind, taking the quality information and still produce thoughtful fears, I say fearful thoughts, thoughts that didn't allow me to move, thoughts that scared me, and hence I was stuck right there. See, if you've been like me back then, it may be time to actually renew your mind. It may be time to subject your mind to a complete overhaul. It's not just about the things you put in, but your thoughts. It's both the product of the quality of information and experience you put into your mind, and also the quality of your mind itself. So consider changing the things you put into your mind, and also consider renewing your mind. My name is Lauli Bitoye. I'm studying for five months. Have a wonderful time ahead.